to you. What I want to do this morning is, by the Spirit of God, I want to, by the Holy Ghost, see if I can't inspire you to seize moments, not miss moments. Too many times we, we miss moments. And our lives, our lives are the sum total of moments. And, and there are many of us, uh, we, we've captured moments, we've been able to grab a hold of moments, but then there's, there, there are some of us who we, we've allowed too many moments to pass us by. We miss too many moments. And, and so I want to I wanna talk to you about that this morning. Our theme this year is celebrating momentous moments. Celebrating those, those momentous moments, moments that have made a difference in this ministry, moments that have been pivotal in this ministry, moments that have uh, uh, created certain things and, and opened certain opportunities for this ministry, those moments. And so, how do we, how do we seize moments? Um, you know, because your life is not lived in days. Your life is not lived in years. Your life is not lived in months. Your life is year lived in moments. Just, just, just moment. That one moment can change your life forever. But you have to be able to seize those moments. Got to be able to recognize the moment, and you have to be able to, to seize those moments, those moments. So that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Again, the theme is celebrating momentous moments. This ministry is the, is the sum total of moments. But, but I want to talk about momentous moments. That's what I'm talking about, momentous moments. Say, pastor's talking about momentous moments. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 16. I won't be before uh, you long. I just want to talk to you. I want to get you to start thinking about moments. I want you to stop allowing moments to pass you by. Because the reality is this, a moment pass, passing me by today is not guaranteed to come back around again. I may never have an opportunity at that moment again. And there are so many things that can keep us from uh, responding to a moment, uh, seizing a moment, uh, a grabbing hold of a moment could, could be fear, uh, could be procrastination, uh, could be we feel, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not prepared. Uh, you know, we, we come up with all of these things, and next thing you know, a moment misses us, and we'll find ourselves standing there. See, a moment, let me say it like this. I grew up in Acres Home. I remember when I was working at Mandel Con off of Crest Street in Denver Harbor. And when I was working at Mandel Con, uh, 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 on Crest Street in Denver Harbor, I used to go to the, to the uh, bus stop and I would catch the bus uh, here in Acres Home. I'd catch the bus and I'd catch that bus and go downtown. And, and then once I got downtown, I'd have to go around the block and, and wait on the Denver Harbor bus. And then the Denver Harbor bus would carry me to Denver Harbor. That's when I was riding the bus. See, you ain't know that. You just thought I rode the bike to work. See, see I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to work. That's a message to somebody right there. I'm, I'm going to get to work. Bus, bike, or Bentley. I'm going to get to work. <laughs> oh, glory to God. But, but here's the point that I wanted to make, that, that, that moments are not like that bus because if I miss that bus, if I just stand there a while, another bus going to come by. Amen. Moments are not like that. You could miss a moment and you'll find yourself living in, in a certain context for the next 10 years, the next 5 years, the next 20 years because you miss that moment and only that moment could have taken you to your destination. So I want to I want to inspire you this morning, the Holy Ghost to inspire you to start capturing those moments and not ignoring those moments, not letting sleep cause you to miss those moments. 
Because the Bible says if you're not careful, you'll find yourself sleeping when it's harvest time. All right? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Yeah, this is, this is real good. I'm getting blessed already. How about you? Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Now watch this. This ministry is where it is because of the moments we've, we've seized. But I'll be the first to tell you. Watch this. I'll be the first to tell you, Brother Howard, that's some moments we've missed. If we're where we are because of the ones we seized, just think where you could be if you'd have captured all of them that came. Because I know some moments that we've, we've missed. See, even with, with my connection and relationship with, 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 with Dr. Williams, see, I believe that's a moment God wants me to seize. Where it's going, why, I don't, I don't know. But you have to seize a moment when God gives it to you. Are you listening to me? Amen. Ephesians 5 and verse number 16 says, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. This word redeeming, uh, it, it, it is a word in the Greek that, that means, watch it, it means to buy up. It means to purchase, to buy up. Now, watch this. I love this word. It is the word ransom. Ransom. That when, normally when someone has been, <laughs> has been kidnapped or held, held ransom for something, then, you know, then what you would do is you would pay them a ransom. And you would pay them a ransom in hopes of what you treasure being returned. Right? You want it back, right? Okay, some of y'all tell us, shoot, that'd be a blessing right now. They <laughs> come, I ain't paying nothing. <laughs> That's how y'all was acting. But you pay ransom because you want to return. So here's what the Scripture is telling us then. When he says redeeming the time, he's telling us that we need to ransom time. We need to pay time a ransom believing that it will return something to us. Now, watch this. So, so, here's what the Spirit of God said to me. When you ransom time, it will guarantee you a return. When you waste time, there is no return for that. You, so, you have, to, you have to ransom. That means you have, to, you have to make a sacrifice. You have to do something you wouldn't plan on doing because something that, that I want in my life right now is being ransomed. So I need to buy up this moment. I need to buy up this moment to study. I need to buy up this moment to get that degree. I need to buy up this moment to invest in this business, invest in this marriage. I need to buy this moment because there's something that I want to be returned to me. And if I, if I maximize this moment, if I invest in this moment, if I put up the ransom for this moment, then that thing I treasure, it'll be returned to me. Now that's what he means when he says, redeeming, oh, this is so good, watch this, redeeming the time because the days are evil. What is he saying, people of God? Watch this. Go ahead and, and buy that moment because you don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. You, you, that, that opportunity may not be here tomorrow. That opportunity may not be there next, next week. And, and tomorrow, is a, is, tomorrow is a prototype because a tomorrow could be next year. A tomorrow could be next month. Doesn't necessarily mean it is a literal 24 hours later or tomorrow, but it could be a season in your life where you are, where you're making an investment in something, where you're trying to decide if I'm going to purchase, if I'm going to buy up this moment, if I'm going to buy up this time because I plan on being somewhere in five years. Moments. The days are evil. Your whole financial context could be totally different tomorrow, and you'd be wishing you would have. He says, redeem, invest, buy up 
time. Matter of fact, let's look at some other translations. The Amplified says this, make the, making the very most of the time, what else? Buying up each opportunity. Now, now notice this, this scripture here requires something from us. It requires something from us. But he said, buying up the opportunities. Stop letting opportunities pass you by. Buy them up. Buy it. Buy that opportunity because it's going to return something to you later. Watch this. The CEV says, so make every minute count. Make every minute count. I love what the voice translation says. The voice translation says this. Make the most of every living and breathing moment. Make the most. Every living and breathing moment. Are you wasting breath? Are you making the most of breathing? So here are two things that this scripture says to you and I. I wrote something down here when I was in the back. And think about this. You, you waste a year. Say, 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 say it's just one year. But, but see, here's what you don't see. It's 365 days you've wasted. So you think one, just one, I mean one year is 365 days that you've wasted. It's 52 weeks. It's not just one year. It's 50, see, you say, well, it's just one year. You know, no, no, that was 52 weeks that you didn't seize, that you didn't grab, that you didn't, you didn't buy, you didn't invest. It's just one year. No, it's 8,765 hours. How many more you need? <laughs> to make up your mind, I'm going to buy this moment. I'm going to buy this. 525,949 minutes that I let moments and opportunities pass me by. So there are two things this, this, this passage teaches us. Number one, number one, it teaches us to seize moments. Seize moments. When, when, when God told me to start water restoration, when God gave me the instruction to start water restoration, that, okay, that was a moment. Now, what am I going to do with that moment? Am I going to sit around the next 10 years saying, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know nobody. And well, you know, come up with all, all the excuses and all the reasons of why I'm not going to buy this moment. I'm going to seize this moment. Because, see, when God tells you to do something and you obey God, that's because God has everything positioned, everything already in line. See, see when, when, when the air traffic controller, watch it, when the air traffic controller tells the pilot, to go into a holding pattern, it ain't, it's not because he's just messing with the pilot. But, that, but, but you, you're not the only aircraft in the, in, in, in the air. And there's some other things going on, and, and, and it has to work in cooperation. You got to comply and work in cooperation with everything else that's going on unless you're going to hurt everybody. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you, when God tells you to buy up a moment, when God gives you a moment, when you have an opportunity to buy up, uh, redeem that time, it's because God has other things that he's been working on. God got certain people in place at the right time, at the right place, and they're ready to make the right decision. And those are the very ones that God is going to use to help you do whatever it is he's called you to do. But when you waste time, now everything gets shifted. Everything gets shifted, and you could possibly get rerouted. And you'll end up, you'll end up in a good place, but I've learned that a good place is not always God's best. Oh, talk to me, somebody. God provided for Israel. 
in the wilderness. He provided for them. He gave them manna. He gave them water. Uh, uh, he gave them quail. I mean, he took care of them. He gave them a pillar of fire by night when it got cold. He gave them a pillar of cloud by day when the sun was beaming down. He protected them. He, shipped. he did all of that in the wilderness. But the wilderness, even though they had his provision, they didn't have his promise because his promise was Canaan. So you can get so comfortable with just provision and never make it to the promise because you refuse to buy up any more moment because you feel you've arrived. Oh, I'm good. God is doing this. God is doing that. I mean, we blessed. God is providing. God is doing this. But are you in the promise? Because God said, yeah, I'm taking care of you here, but there is another place where you have no lack. There's another place where the land is flowing with milk and honey. There's another place. Don't get settled where you are. Tell your person that you say, don't park here. We can't, we can't, we can't park here. There's still other moments we got to buy up. And we got to be willing to buy up those moments. Oh, that's good, Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't get so comfortable with provision. See, you can get so comfortable with just, just paying your bills because, because you know, if, you, if you've struggled and had financial difficulty and now you're just able to pay your bills, man, you can get real comfortable. Man, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. But that, that may not be the place. That's not the place. Because, see, there's a place where you have more than enough. It is not God's best that you have just enough. God wants you to have more than enough. And that's what Canaan is all about. The person next to you say, don't stop buying. Don't stop buying. Don't stop buying. You got to be willing to, to buy up. That's what the scripture says. He, say, he says, he says, redeem this time. Seize this moment. Buy up this opportunity. It's going to cost you. That's why it says buy. He didn't say, I'm going to give you an opportunity. He says, buy the opportunity. Mm which means you're going to have to make up sacrifices. You think you're just going to go where you want to go without sacrifice? Come on, talk to me. Yeah, that, that, that's not going to happen. The only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. And you got to stop living in the dictionary. <laughs> we just want God to just shower on, Lord, just shower, rain down on me, Lord. <laughs> you know, Brother Howard and Mrs. Howard, when you guys bought the cemetery, Houston Moore Garden, and, and, and what, what's amazing is, and some people may not know, the very place you guys own now and have owned for years, y'all used to work there. But a moment came. <laughs> and, and watch this, watch this. They, they didn't just see themselves as workers. They said, we can own this. Let's buy. And, and now it has yield. It's, it's giving them a return. But had they not taken advantage of that moment, how, how many times you think the man going to offer it to you? <laughs> can I say something? Can, can I say something? <laughs> can, can I say something? Here's what the Lord told me. This, this, I don't know when he told me this, but I know the Lord told me this. Watch this, because I'm going to make a statement, and I don't want you to miss what I'm saying, so I'm going to add some context to what I'm saying. <laughs> See, some of you miss moments because you, you, you praying. Watch, watch this now. Now, hold on, Pat. What, now, now, you know, you got to pray now. No, no, no hold on now. Come on, pal, you've been, you been good 16 years now, no? Now, year 17, you're talking about we ain't got to pray? <laughs> See, 
see, if you got money in the bank, when it's time to buy something, you just go buy it. You don't have to hustle up and get the money. So if you got time invested in prayer, communication, and walking with God, you'll know when you need to move and you ain't got to pray about that. There it is. There it is. Come on, man, God. The Bible talks about, the Bible talks about the talents, the five, the two, the one. Remember that? Matthew 25. So the Lord gave one servant five talent, gave another servant two talent, gave a servant one talent. Yes? yes. And the Bible said the Lord, he went on a journey. And he came back to see what they had done. The Bible said the one with the five, he said, look, I, I, I've taken the five and I've gained five more. And watch this. The Lord never told him what to do with it. The Lord entrusted him. I'm going to give it to you, and, and I'm going to see what you're going to do. So, so he invested the five. He got ten. The guy with the two, he invested the two. He got two more, so he now has four. The guy with the one, he said, well, you know, you know Lord, you know, I, I didn't hear from you. I didn't hear from you. You know, I, I know how you are. You know, your reputation precedes you. I know you're, you're a hard man, da, da, da. And, and so Jesus told him, so if, if, if you knew all of that, watch what he said. He said, you should have at least... Put my money in the bank, and I could have at least got some interest with it. But, but what is he saying? In other words, don't just hold a moment. I, I gave you a moment to do something, prove and demonstrate your stewardship, and you sitting around waiting on me to tell you to do something with it? Now, I'll tell you where that came from. I was praying to the Lord, asking the Lord, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do next? What do we need to build next? And the Lord said to me, you don't have to ask me every time you get ready to build something. Come on. I gave you the land. Yeah. Now do something with it. I told you to build a city. You know what needs to be in the city. Look at what's going on around you, and you decide what's next. Or I can just hold it. Well, Lord, you know, I still got this 44 with all these trees on it just like it was when you gave it to me because I ain't want to do nothing you ain't want me to do. I told you to build me a city. Start building. I ain't never, I ain't never prayed in that when somebody came to me for counseling. I ain't never prayed. Now, Lord, do you want me to counsel them? Do you want me to help restore their marriage, Lord? No, I told you that when you started. Restore lives. Don't keep coming to me. You want me to restore this one? Don't restore this one. Who you want me to restore this with? You don't, don't restore. Okay, the Lord told me not to restore you. See, some of you can't see these moments. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't see these moments because you're too busy praying. Yeah. And, and really, and, and sometimes we're praying because we're scared to make a move. And so we'll cover up, we'll cover up our fear by saying, well, the Lord ain't released me. The Lord ain't said nothing to me. Tell the person next to you, say, seize the moment. So there are two things he's telling us here. Number one, he's telling us to seize the moment. The second thing he's telling us, he's telling us not to waste time. Not to waste time. You could have had your degree by now. You could have been in another place by now. You could have been, you could have expanded your business by now. You could have gotten that relationship straight by now. You, you could have been in a different place with your spouse by now. How much more time are you going to waste? You could have lost weight by now. No, really, come on now. Come on now, you know, cause we all, you know, cause you know, we all, we all, you know, we all, we all try to, you know, I'm just, I'm working on my way. You ain't, you ain't working on it, sitting there looking. Just, just, just think, but th think about, it. just think about now. Had, had you seized that moment? Had you, had you seized that moment? 
Just think where you'd be right now. Had you start working on your credit, you know, you had a moment. You, you, you had a moment. F financial peace almost over now. But see, here's what throws us off. And I'm going to pick.